Welcome back, friends and family of the internet. Welcome back to Starkey Farmstead, where no topic is off the table. What if I told you that you could speak to your beloved lost relative, your child, your spouse, your parents, your best friend? All you had to do was upload, upload all videos upload their diary, upload all of their pictures, all of their Facebook memories and comments into one app, and then you could share the rest of your life with that person. What if I told you that that is not a joke, that is not something that's so far off, but it's actually happening right now across the world? So let me pull this up for you guys. He's getting bigger. See? Oh. Baby Charlie. Wow. I want to watch the entire thing with you without talking. And then we're going to go through it again. He's getting bigger. See? Oh, honey, that's wonderful. Kicking like crazy. He's listening. Put your hand on your tummy and hum to him. You used to love that. It feels like he's dancing in there. <laughs> Would you tell Charlie that bedtime story you always used to tell me? Once upon a time, there was a baby unicorn who didn't know he knew how to fly. This baby unicorn was like your mom because she didn't know that she knew how to fly, but she knew how to do all kinds of fabulous things. Hi, Grandma. Hey, Charlie. How was school today? It was really fun. I made this crazy shot in basketball. I don't really care that much about basketball. What about the crush? Stop. Grandma, stop talking. Just tell me one thing. Look who's going to be a great grandmother. Oh, Charlie. <laughs> Congratulations. She says that he's been kicking a lot, though. Like, a little too much. Tell her to put her hand on her tummy and hum to him. You loved that. You would have loved this moment. You can call any time. Okay, Mom, I just need a quick video. Is this like an audition or something? <laughs> no, Mom. Just three minutes. You need my best sight? <laughs> I can play the piano. <laughs> I am. I'm absolutely. I'm your mother, after all. Keep going. Can you start by telling us a little bit about yourself? Well, I was born as a very young child. I would hope so. <laughs> let's, let's chat. Okay. I hate it. I love this girl that I'm showing you. Um, I found her one day when she was talking about Louisiana bloodlines. Anyway, really like the girl. She's got great content. I'll link it in description for you. Did y'all see how creepy that was? So before her mother died, she does a three minute upload video to an app that will forever keep her mother alive. Don't forget for that subscription fee of $29.99 a month, right? Because we're going to own nothing and be happy. Please don't do this. I understand grief. I say that I do. I've only ever lost a few people that were close to me. And I can imagine the desire to show your loved one to your children, your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren. But that is not your loved one. That thing talking back to you is part of the beast system. Leviticus 19.31 says, Regard not them that have familiar spirits. Neither seek after wizards to be defiled by them. I am the Lord, your God. Deuteronomy 18, 10 through 12. Let no one be found among you who sacrifices their son or daughter in the fire. Who practices divination, din divination or sorcery. Interprets omens. Engages in witchcraft or cast spells or who is a medium or spiritist who consults 
the dead or who consults the dead one more time for the people at the back of the bus the bu uh, bus let's all say it together or who consults the dead anyone who does these things what things sacrifices sons and daughters in the fire practices divination or sorcery interprets omens engages in witchcraft and, and let me point out here, God does not say white witch or he says witchcraft. Cast spells, who is a medium or a spiritist or who consults the dead. Anyone who does those things is what? Detestable to the Lord. Because of these same detestable practices, the Lord your God will drive out those nations before you. I'm going to show you something I found. The first AI seance, how people are using chatbots. <laughs> I'm sorry, you guys. Let's get finished with an hour long video. My mouth is not working. Chatbots to speak to the dead. This was August 13th, 2025. Are we witnessing the birth of a new kind of seance? One powered by code, not candles. A growing number of people are turning to advanced AI chatbots called grief bots to simulate conversations with loved ones. As deeply human as it is technologically strange, it raises urgent questions about grief, memory, and the ethics of digital afterlives. One of the most talked about platforms in the space is Project December, Initially, an experimental art project turned public service. Users voluntarily submit character traits, memories, and communication habits of a deceased person. The platform then creates a chatbot that stimulates that person in conversation, sometimes very convincingly, for about 10 and up an hour, $10 an hour. This is highway robbery. This right here talks about how Joshua spent a night chatting with AI Jessica, a recreation of his late fiance, and described how real it felt to him. The Guardian reported how Christy Angel was shaken when an AI representation of her deceased partner told her he was in hell before later offering her comfort. This is how they're going to bring back the dead. A lot of you have asked me, Samantha, do you think that they're going to bring Charlie Kirk back as if he is like the Antichrist? Guys, I don't know. I don't know. All I know is the deception is real. Okay? Please don't willingly put your dead loved ones personal information into an artificial intelligence especially if you did not ask for their permission before death that is so not okay friends and family of the internet boundaries folks death is really horrific a lot of you ladies on here you are widows please do not consider doing this a lot of you have told me how you've lost your children. Please do not do this. This will drive you crazy. Given our fundamental need for connection, it is no surprise that even this digital approximation can feel deeply comforting. Researchers call this persuasive phenomenon the ELISA effect, a tendency to attribute genuine emotion to computers even when we know they're just executing code. Many users know the bot isn't truly alive, yet their emotional responses remain intense. Companies like StoryFile or YOV, You Only Virtual, now offer lifelike AI avatars that respond vocally and visually to questions, sometimes built before a person dies. 
Families are starting to see this as a way to keep the presence and personality of a loved one alive indefinitely. Let me make this very clear to everybody, and especially my children and grandchildren who may see this after I go be with my Lord. Do not do this for me, Samantha. I don't want this. This is, it would not be me. That's creepy. Don't do this. Oh, and guess where it came from? Critics warn these AI seances may interfere with the reading process. I agree. Ethics, ethicists from the University of Cambridge have urged safeguards such as clear disclaimers, mandatory consent from the deceased recorded before death, and even digital funerals to retire AI personas respectfully. Psychologists also caution about emotional dependency and chatbot psychosis. I've done videos on chatbot psychosis. Please go watch those before you even consider something like this. The rise of grief bots and digital avatars forces us to decide, will we embrace comfort, deliver through lines of code, or preserve the sanctity of memory in its natural form. These are not your family members. This is a form of necromancy, which is really anti-biblical, friends and family. Oh man, when I tripped over this, I was like, my God, baby's on his way with breakfast for me. Him and Steven went to eat breakfast this morning. You guys, I got the cutest email. <laughs> it wasn't even an email. It was on YouTube under his aunt's, YouTube, like screen name. I see, I come to you house. He told me somebody hit him to call his grandma. So I call his grandma and I'm like, is the baby with you? And she's like, no. I'm like, is Roya with you? And she's like, yeah. I was like, Roya, baby got your phone? She's like, yeah. I said, then tell me why they, he just sent me this. So I screenshotted it and sent it to his grandma. So she calls him. He's six now. He'll be seven this month. Well, next month. And he answers the phone and he goes, he goes, April Fool's, we're all like, uh, yeah, April Fool's been long gone. So he got his way. Steven went and picked him up and they went and ate at Waffle House. And now they're bringing me breakfast because I stayed home to work, right? Because these videos needed to, to get out there. I understand grief. This is this cannot end well. Do you guys remember Ouija boards, like communing with the dead? I do. And that opened a door in my life that took a few years to shut. Don't make it normal for your babies to be communicating with dead people on computer screens, friends and family. All right, that's not their grandmother their grandfather, their dad. It's not. It's gross. If you want to show them who their loved one was, then show them actual videos, real videos of their loved one. Show them pictures. Find something that that person wrote or said and share that memory with them. Watch. You want to tell you what's going to be next? Because a lot of people are going to like this. It's going to get big. Dead people coming back. They're going to do is some kind of memory share where you can share your memory of your loved one with somebody else. Brain to brain interface. It's coming. It's coming. Technocracy is coming. That's why I shared what I did earlier with you. There, It's going to end up with humans in chairs with AI over their faces and Robots out in the world living life as you. Does that make sense? You understand what I'm saying? While you, the physical you, is at home. More and more people have more interactions between this screen than they do in the real world. This is why right now I believe church is so important. Or church is perfect? No, it's humans, humans together worshiping God. It's not going to be perfect. But I think it's important especially in this day, to have a community where you make friends and a place where you go and people check on you. I, I think that's very, very important in this day and age. That's, I mean, you know, that and growing your own food. So if you've not purchased your book, Growing Under a Poisoned Sky, we just published in July. Please purchase your book. 
It's going to tell you what toxic chemicals are coming down in the sky and how you can fix that. You can fix it. God gave us so much knowledge. It's all in the Bible. All of it. It's there. He knew all of this was going to happen. So when he said in Deuteronomy and Leviticus, don't do this, he meant it. He knew that this would be here. He's almighty. He's all knowing. So please, if you are lonely or heartbroken, these are things that you can do. Pray about it. Read your Bible. Go to a support group for grieving people. Start a YouTube channel. Share your experiences with the world. Create a platform where other grieving people can come and you guys support each other. Real people. Not artificial intelligence. There are so many young people losing their lives to artificial intelligence. I can't even believe that someone would create an app for dead people. Like that's so flippin' creepy to me. But then, you know, Ouija boards were creepy to my parents. I remember my mom was like, that's not coming to my house. Oh, hell no. And that's exactly what she said. She didn't be all Christianese. My mama was like, hell no. <laughs> you better throw that in your trash can to me at the end. I mean, I was like, it's not mine. I'm a, I don't care who it belongs to. You throw that in that trash right now. And I did because I was a little afraid of my mom back then. You know I me mean? like a good, healthy fear. Don't take my words out of out of order. Some of y'all know y'all had those mothers very proper. But when she finally said no, she meant no. My mom said no. And I thank God for that. I also remember when she popped out my cassette of Guns and Roses and threw it out the window while she was driving. And I cried because, you know, back then we all had jobs at 14 and 15. I got my first paycheck and I bought my first CD and it was Guns N' Roses, baby. And I popped it in, jamming on the way to work. And my mom's driving and she looks at that and she looks at the, and she goes, eject. I'm like, what are you doing? And she's like, we aren't, well, you are not. I said, I bought that. It's my own money. She's like, yeah, well, I pay for everything. You live in my house. And when you live in my house, Samantha, you live by my rules. So I thank God for my mother. Hmm. Maybe I should make her start a YouTube channel and teach these young parents how to parent. Can I get an amen? My mama wasn't playing with me. And no, she did not give me my money back either. Because I said that. I was like, she could get my money back. And she was like, <laughs> no. You got to love. I mean, come on now. But I would never put my mom and her memories and who she was into an AI generated like dead mom. Mm, no, thank you. I'll get her with eternity. I'm good with that. Love you guys so much. Thank you for your time.